Hey guys, this is Brian from ProFender USA. Welcome back to our build on our GX. Today I'm joined with Richard, our suspension specialist. He's gonna be the one that's actually turning the wrenches on this build. So Richard, how do you feel about this GX build? I wish you guys told me earlier about this because you guys took it off road. So now I have to work on this car 10 times more. Isn't that what we pay you for though? I guess so. All right guys, let's get into the wrenches. First things first, do we need to wash all this mud off? We sounds like a lot of people, man. I think it's gonna be on you to wash this thing. All right, whatever's. Um, I noticed that you bashed the plate underneath the chassis. You can land it on top of a rock and bashed in the center section of here. So we'll probably replace it and beef it up. All right, man, <laughs> let's, uh, let's move further back and let's see what's going on. There's mud everywhere. Still not gonna wash it. All right, well, I noticed <laughs> that the transmission drain plug's leaking a little bit. That's something easy we could fix. But the transfer case output shaft to the front seems to be leaking pretty bad. Um, I don't know how this happened. That's probably because of the 250,000 miles that are on it. Yeah, I guess. Um, that's something we're gonna probably have to service. It seems like everything looks pretty good. I don't see any damages to the rails or anything like that. Let's uh, go further back. As we were coming back onto the highway after the trail, we definitely felt some hopping going on on the back. So I think one of these shocks is blown out. Yeah, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree. This thing has like 250,000 miles. It still has original shocks in it. So no, no shock should be able to last this long without it popping or getting worn out. Uh, we're gonna take off the wheel, inspect the suspension some more, but uh, I think we're gonna have to work on the suspension first, and then we'll move on to the skid plate. Address the oil leaks. So what do you think about that? I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with it. I'm out. We're gonna have to take off the internal motoring system for the suspension. Since we're gonna be putting our four-step adjustable suspension, we don't need this dampening motor or anything like that. We're probably gonna actually re replace some of the bushings on the suspension arm, and we'll probably move on to the back. All right, for the back, we're probably just gonna replace the shock with a longer four-way adjustable shock. We're also probably gonna modify the air spring just a little bit to get a little bit more stroke out of the whole system. Knowing Brian, I know he's gonna thrash it pretty hard, so we need to do as much maintenance on the suspension as we can. But first, we definitely need to take this thing outside, wash everything, blast all this grime and dirt off the car. So let's go. All right, so we finished cleaning off everything with the pressure washer. So we're gonna move on to removing the rear shock and installing the new shock. But first we need to add some penetrating oil on the nuts and bolts on the system. Just because we wanna make sure that the removal becomes really nice and smooth. For your East Coast guys, you definitely need to let this sit for overnight before you guys actually start cracking the nuts and bolts. So let's try this. So that we already sprayed it, we're gonna use a 17 wrench and start removing the top nut. Now a cool trick about these stock factory Toyota shocks is you can actually grab the dust boot and hold onto the shock and rotate the shock without the stud spinning. So here we go, you see everything spinning. All right, before we put the shock in, we gotta make sure we put the bushings on. Make sure you get the first cup in facing upwards, the bushing, and then we have the upper seat that cl clips into the frame mount. Before you actually slide the shock into place, make sure the cup seat goes right into the frame rail and it might be a little crooked in the beginning because the shock's not completely seated in there, but once you start tightening it down, it'll actually crush up. Next, you need to put the bushing in. Once you put the bushing on top, then you put the cap piece. You gotta make sure it's facing downward. It might be a little difficult because you have the body in the way. Wow, 
that. Pull down the shock, reseat everything. Then you take the supplied nut. And because these shafts are a lot bigger, we upgraded the nut hardware and you need to use a 22 millimeter wrench to tighten up the top nut. Then we put back the factory supplied 17 millimeter bolt and snug it down. All right, cool. Moving on to the front, we're gonna access the electronics for the suspension dampening. We're gonna remove all the suspension dampening and then remove the shock. So first off, we need to disconnect the connector right here. Use a 90 degree pick, pick out the back of the harness, push the release on the back side. There you go. With the harness removed, we're gonna have to take off the motor for the shock dampening. But first, we're gonna cheat it a little bit. We're gonna lower the suspension down by loosening the top three 14 millimeter nuts. Next, we're gonna just disconnect the sway bar end link so the tension is off the suspension on this corner. All right, with all the suspension kind of loose, we can push down on the suspension. You could stick either a screwdriver or a pry bar just to get a little extra room sideways so that you could fit a four millimeter Allen wrench into the top motor so that you could remove the motor off the shock itself. And you wanna get the one in the back too. the motor out with the harness. So after the motor's removed, you want to take a 17 millimeter uh, socket wrench, loosen up the top nut, and remove the whole unit together, and there you go. Now you can move on to removing the actual shock assembly. For the beginning steps of taking off the shock, we're going to remove the lower control arm, but in order to get to the bolts for the lower control arm, we have to take off the windows tray. So. Take these two 10s, and then we'll change it up to 12s with the extension. And then we're gonna take the sway bar end link, put it back in just to keep the tension on the knuckle. And we have mallet, smack the bolt out. Okay. So now, since the arms are loose, now we pull out the last stud. Now we drop down the lower control arm. There's many other different ways you can actually do this. We just do this so that we can keep the axle in check so it doesn't actually get pulled out and then you have to reset all the bearings and everything inside the axle. So let's hurry up, take off this. And we just drop the whole assembly out from the bottom. So now we have the whole shock unit here. We're gonna remove the spring from the shock. Just make sure that the top hat and the bottom bracket match up after you put everything back together so that you won't have a hard time putting the whole assembly back into the car. First off, we're gonna be removing the 17 millimeter nut on top of the shock. Okay, drop off the unit. All right, so now we have the replacement shock. 
We're gonna add the both supplied spacers to lift the car two inches. We're gonna put the spring seat in, the spring isolator, and add on the dust boot. And zip tie the body of the bus dust boot onto the body of the shock. Then we're gonna add the washer on the top. And you wanna take the cylindrical bushing, but with the, the nipple that's sticking up. Then add the whole assembly back in. the supplied bushing. Bushing on top, and the nut. Okay. So then we're gonna take a little adjustable wrench just to hold the tip. And we're gonna torque everything down. And there you go. All right, now we have the full assembly. We just have to reverse of how we put it back, pulled it back out. Now that we changed all the shocks, we have to move on to the harnesses for the dampening control. We don't like to leave any leads sitting out in the open because water and mud will get trapped inside. So what we're gonna do is take apart these connectors and I'll show you how to plug these up and put it back onto the car. So first off, you wanna get a 90 degree pick. Remove these little terminal clips on the back end. There you go. Uh, all right, split them open. Now you can access the back, but what you need to do is go to the front, remove this little plastic clip that's holding the retainer for the wires. Take this out, put it off to the side. Now you need a terminal pick. To remove these picks, you have to kind of grab the wire from the back. Lift up the tab, pull the wire out. Same thing goes for the next three. Grab the tab, lift, pull the wire out. The next one, lift the tab. It's a little difficult. <laughs> huh. This one doesn't like me. All right, we'll come back to this one. <laughs> this one comes out. All right, let's see, last one. All right, there you go. So now that the harness is out, what I usually do is I pull this out. Since we're not gonna be reusing this ever again, I'd like to keep these little silicone boots that they have on here. So what I usually do is I snip the tips Remove all the little boots. Now I go back to this side. I push the boots back into the retainer. Now I use a little bit of brake clean. Just to clean the surface. Now I'm gonna use a little gasket maker, some Permatex. Just dab it on the backside. This will keep the water from going in there and mud. So that's done. I'm just gonna close it back like it was like a wire going to it. And this side, I will insert this. And the, for, to top it off, actually add a little bit of dielectric grease. This will just 
take care of the connector piece on the other side, not on this side. So we don't have to worry about this. And there you go. Modified a connector for the front and we're gonna do the same thing for the back. <laughs> so here we go. We're gonna put this connector back in and that's it. With the suspension on, now we're gonna address the leaks on the car. We're gonna get onto the transmission pan and do a little service. And plug back in. side, we're going to have to undo the O2 sensor. With any other transmission service, you need to clean the pan. So, get rid of all this ATF that's on here. All the metal that collected over time. Next person. Okay, with the pan clean, now we can move on to taking off this filter, replacing the filter, and then reinstalling the pan. Okay. okay. And put a little bit on the seal right here. Then reinstall the new one. TV's on and we've installed the magnets back on. Now we can put the pan back in. All right, now we're gonna take off the skid plate just to get easier access. And then we're gonna clean the skid plate also since it's all oily. Now we're going to remove the drive shaft so we can access the leaking seal. Pop this bitch out. Okay, so now we just got to break the little tab seal. Let it go into neutral. All right. So it's best to count the turns so you can return it back to where it was. There you go. Okay. Go like this. Okay, now we just installed a new seal. And then we're gonna add some grease on the edge just to make the seal go in easier. Good thing to put it in the swines also. And we'll do it install. 
10 turns. Okay. So that's one. Ten. Maybe punch. Punch the edge back in. There you go. And reinstall the drive shaft. All right, Brian, so we installed the four-way adjustable shocks and removed all the stock Toyota dampening controls for the stock shocks. Sounds good. Did you go through and tuck all the connectors up out of the way? I did one better. We actually made connector block offs and we plugged it back into the stock harness. So you shouldn't have any wiring problems at all. Nice. Yeah, and we also redid the transmission pan and fixed the transfer case seals. Okay, so no more funny noises underneath that thing. No, so um, yeah, just, uh, just report back to me, have some fun. Sounds good. All right, let's go ahead and take it out. All right, guys, now that Richard's caught us up on a bunch of maintenance and installing our four-way adjustable shocks, we're gonna go through and take this thing out on the trail. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can follow along with that video.